Uh, Brianna. Hey, Zach, what's up? I'm blessed. How are you? Doing well. Thank you. So um, I have a dilemma. I went to JV with you guys so bad trying to land my first deal. Um, there's a guy that I was able to negotiate a good price with, offer on a house. Um, but he is asking for a due diligence deposit for the inspection period, which is, he said, separate from the earnest money deposit. And he's asking for 1% of the offer price that I was willing to negotiate. Um, and I did mention to him that in the contract that I used, there isn't a specific clause for that kind of deposit other than earnest money. Um, but he did say that if I wanted to do this with him, it was non-negotiable because of non-serious buyers that he's said backed out of the deal. Um, but to be honest, I just lost my job, so I don't have extra money just to fork out for that. Um, and since I do have more time on my hands now, I'm focusing full time on wholesaling, trying to move, you know, deals along and get the first deal finally in JV with you guys. So do you have any suggestions on like how to get around that whole deposit situation? Yeah. I mean, not a big deal. I mean, what market are you in? North Carolina. Where North Carolina? This one is in the Albemarle area. Uh, Aber, what's it Albemarle, called? Albemarle, close to what's Charlotte. What's the closest metro to that? Close to Charlotte. Okay. It, all right. How far is it from Charlotte? Um, It's about 40 minutes, 40, 45. Okay. What's the county's population? Um, let me double check. Yeah, let me know. I think it's like 200,000, but let me double check. Okay. Seems like, I just want to make sure there's enough buyers in the market, obviously. And uh, if there's enough buyers, it should be fine. But yeah, let me know on that. And while you're doing it, I'll let you know some things I, I can tell you. So first and foremost, do not freak out over the EMD. I see so many wholesalers freak out over EMD. 1%. This person's been burned so many stinking times. And the reason why this specific seller has been burned so many times. And I want you to understand this. This is very, very important, but it is usually the seller's problem, not the wholesaler's problem, right? And so I personally know people that have been married like eight, nine times. And like, like you know, you get married two or three times, okay, fine. But like, I legit know people that have been married eight or nine times in like a, a 10, like a 10, 12 year period. Most people that have been married eight or nine times to like eight or nine different people, it's usually not that like every single person is terrible, right? Uh, it's, it's usually it's like, okay, something might be up with you. And I'm not saying that's something bad about like everyone, obviously, but like you got to think about this for a second. If a seller has been like getting in and out of like eight or nine contracts, it's like something's happening, right? Like there's a problem usually. And most of the time here, Brianna, the issue is the seller and their price. They have this crazy price stuck in their mind and they're not willing to get off of it. And a new wholesaler says, okay, if you're stuck on this price, I'm just going to lock it up and try to bring as many buyers through and see whoever sticks. That's what they do. The seller gets burned from that so many times. And now that they're completely unreasonable, they want the most for the property and they also want insane term. Here's the thing. If Brianna, if this seller wants their 1% EMD, you should say, even if you don't have the cash, I mean, you should have someone who has the cash as a partner, but like, I always say this personally, what I say, yeah, I'd love to do the 1%. So if you want the 1%, that's non-negotiable, Mr. Seller, my price is non-negotiable. And then they start freaking out. Like, what do you mean? You're nice. Your price is non-negotiable. My price is non-negotiable at a 1% EMD. I'm not here to play games. It's this price. And this is a price. I know my cash buyer will put up the EMD for me for it. Like stupid, stupid stupid low. And now the seller, usually they're like, dang, this person's serious. They go with it. Or they're in a mode where it's like, no, I want my EMD and also want an unreasonable price. You go to the next person. That's it. Well, the thing is, is that, like I said, he, I told him, I said, oh, so you mean like earnest money? Um, and he said, no, no, no. And he was like, I'm a lawyer. I'm an ex lawyer from California. Like I know the terms. This is totally separate than earnest money. I'm talking about something totally different. He said it was a due diligence deposit for the inspection period. So you I had never heard. Too, but do you have your own attorney? Me? No. Well, you, you need an attorney in wholesaling for the state of North Carolina. Oh, like the um, title company. Yeah. I have one chosen in mind. Yeah. So it, it's still an attorney state in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And so you say this, well, that's great. Um, I'm not a lawyer. You're not a lawyer. They might get a little offended at that. How about I talk to my closing attorney and see what they say? They closed a lot more transactions than I have and probably more than you in the state of North Carolina. If they're okay with it, then sure. That's it. But you let the seller know, hey, if you want your terms, I'm going to get my price. It's price or terms in this business, right? 
So if they want a crazy price, I get the terms I want. I might get a creative finance deal, right? If they want crazy terms, like crazy EMD, all this stupid stuff, I get the price I want. That's how wholesaling works. That's how any real estate deal works in the entire country. And so yeah, go with their stupid little games. You can do the due diligence thing. You have a cash bar protecting on that one. But it has to be at a price that is so stinking low that it's okay. And a cash okay. buyer would be like, Brianna, this is such a great deal. Here, here it is. Fine. I don't care. Here's a thousand bucks where 1% is. I just need this deal. Okay. Because I was able to negotiate like 90,000 off of what he was asking. So it, it was a good negotiation. Are I you going to make at least very... $60,000 on the assignment? I believe so. Yeah, honestly. Well, at that point, you go to a, you go to a cash buyer and you ask them to put up the MD and you are, you're only going to make 40 and you get an extra 20 grand in the buyer. And a lot, not a lot of people get scared at me saying that, but if you get the extra 20 grand in the buyer, guess what happens? They will go, they'll walk on water basically for anything for you because it's such a great stinking deal. And boom, that's how you do it. Okay. Alrighty then. All right. And my, um, <laughs> my last question is, um, there's another house I've been trying to get in touch with the seller for. Um, it's a vacant house, but they still like mow the grass. I've tried like every, um, every number I could find. I even tried, uh, this individual's business <laughs> number that I found on Google and I keep hitting a brick wall. So is there like any suggestions you have or how I can reach them? I even did the sticky note and everything. I'm not getting any, anything back. First and foremost, put a band sun in the yard. That's the best way. Uh, where's the mailing address again? One more time. This is a different uh, location. Cool. Where's the mailing address? It's in North Carolina as well. How far is that mailing address from you? It's literally right across the street. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, is the mailing the same as the property? Yes. Oh, okay. So are the taxes being paid? Um, I don't know. I didn't check that. Okay. Check if the tax is the lawn being mowed. Yes. Yeah. Every so week. What I always say this is, okay. Someone's at least taking care of the property, right? Mm -hmm. Someone's at, so if the sticky notes there, someone should be there. If they're not answering the sticky note, I, I bring it a step up. I put a bandit sign in the yard. It's always the best thing. It always gets the best response. I've done them all. That's always going to be the best resp response. We buy houses cash. Hey, I, I've been trying to buy your house. This is the only, I was just waiting for someone to do it. And I was just letting you know, I buy houses cash. I put it on the yard. It's a little much, but Honestly, desperate times call for desperate mess measures. Have you DM this person on Facebook or tried mm. at least to find them? Um, no. <laughs> mm -mm. What? No, I have not. Try to DM them. Okay. You know, the, ki the kids are sliding the DMs these days. It, our wholesalers can do the same thing. Okay. Will do. Thank you. DM them. And then the last but not least uh, thing that's the super secret little method. Is there a car at the, is there a car at the place? No, not anything. Okay. Um, you talk to the neighbors? No. <laughs> I, I can go on I'm, and on. I'm like, to go over there and trust not. me. I go to the neighbor's house and knock on the door and say, Hey, my name's Brianna. I actually looking to buy a couple more house in the area. I, I always drive by this house and it seems abandoned. It actually seems like a good rental property for me and my partner who are looking to buy a rental, right? What's the story on this property? I'm trying to get a hold of the sell the, the person and they're, they're never answering. Like, has this property always been like this? And you just you go down the line. Okay. I'll give you it should, a oh, try. that's, you know, unfortunately, her name is Cassie. She passed away five years ago. Her daughter, you know, her, her daughter, Tammy, takes care of the house. And she calls me if there's ever an issue. I'll give you Tammy's number. And heck, you might get Tammy's number, right? Like that's usually that's how the story works. So knock on the neighbor's doors and just be simple, right? Okay. Hey, my name's Brianna. I'm looking to buy a couple more house for cash. And I always drive by this house and just like, what's, what's the story with it? There's usually no one there. And it seems like a decent property for me to buy. All right. I'll muster up the boldness and, <laughs> and do it. You don't need to, like, first, first of all, what are they going to say? How dare you try to buy this abandoned piece of snot property that's going to increase my property value? How dare you do that? Most people are excited about that because someone goes in, they renovate the property, and it gets a really nice comp for them. Boom. Okay. It's a big mindset thing a lot of people have. They're, they're too scared to talk to a door knock on a person. The worst case is says, no, I'm not interested. I'm like, oh, I'm not actually asking you to look. I'm just seeing what's the store in the house next door. Mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. much it Alrighty, i'll give it a shot thank you all right appreciate it, brianna you got this any more questions uh no that's all thanks a lot all right good luck